Here on the computer, the first thing we're going to need to do is register all of our DJI products. Um, FPV people, welcome to the wonderful world of DJI. We're going to do that by downloading the DJI system, the DJI Assistant. Uh, right here, DJI Assistant. We're going to download that and install it on the computer. And if this is your first time doing this, there will be a few steps to jump through, setting up an account and so forth. I'll put a link to the DJI Assistant page I was just on down in the video description so you can get there quickly. I've already gone through those steps. The next thing you're going to need to do is plug in the battery so that your air unit is powered on. Again, make sure your antennas are installed for this step. And we're going to plug in USB. And you should see the uh, device you've got plugged in pop up here. We're going to go ahead and activate the device. Yes, read all of this. <laughs> and when the activation is complete, it's a good idea to... It's a good idea to go ahead and update the firmware to the latest. You're going to need to do the same thing for the goggles. They can be powered using this XT60 plug that comes with them. It plugs in right there, pretty, pretty obvious. And you're going to activate and update the firmware. And you're going to do the same thing for the transmitter if you are using the transmitter. If you're going to use the DJI controller before you can activate it, you're going to need to leave it on charge overnight till the battery gets to full charge. Uh, the battery is shipped in a deactivated state and it won't turn on at all until you've given it a full charge at least one time. So after you've charged it fully, then uh, the way to power it on is to short press, then long press the power button. If you're familiar with DJI products, this is very familiar to you, but you may not be if you're an FPV pilot. A single press of the button just shows the battery level. Short press, long press powers it up. Now that you have activated and updated the firmware on your goggles, your controller, and your air unit, the next thing to do is to link them all up. So I've got a couple of four cell batteries and let's do that. I'm gonna plug in the battery and my props are off for safety. Very important when you're working with your quadcopter on the bench that the props are off. They could spin at any, t they probably won't, but they could. And if they do, it'll be bad. Here on the left side of the air unit is the status LED and it will be green. I'm gonna use a paper clip or something similar to push the binding button and it will turn red. To bind the goggles, I'm gonna plug them in. Again, you can use up to a 4S battery. I think 2S to 4S is fine. While the goggles are powering up, here's a little tip for you. I uh, had some problems with occasionally the power cord pulling out while I was flying the goggles. Uh, just the battery would get tugged on it. So I took a zip tie and zip tied the power cord to this retention buckle for the head strap. You may want to do that too. Maybe not. It's your call. Just thought I'd point it out. When the goggles have booted up, I'm going to push the red binding button on the goggles. And it's just beneath the power jack. And when I do that, the LED on the air unit will turn green, indicating that bind was successful. And at this point, you should have picture in your goggles, although it's kind of hard to show you that. To bind the controller, we're going to press the bind button again on the air unit. The light will go red. We're going to power on the controller, and to do that, you're going to press once and then again and hold. It will power up. And to put it into binding mode, we're going to press at the same time the record button, this button on the front, and this button we're going to click. The LED on the front will go blue and then green, indicating it's bound. And the LED on the air unit will also go green. So now we have to go into the flight controller and confirm that everything is set up correctly. This flight controller has been designed to work with the DJI system, so most of the things we need to do are gonna already be done automatically, but let's go check it out. We're gonna plug in USB, and we're gonna plug in a battery because we need, to, we need the air unit on. Uh, our props are off props are off. I'm going to turn on the DJI controller and I'm not I've not got the goggles on right now. We'll see in a minute if we need the goggles to be on. We'll connect and we're going to go to the receiver tab. And what I want to see is that the channels move correctly when I move the sticks on the DJI controller. So I'm going to raise the throttle 
and the throttle is the throttle channel is moving. I'm going to move yaw left and right. The yaw channel is moving left and right. And I'm going to push pitch forward. Pitch is going up and down and roll left and right. So that is all correct. Yay, fantastic. Now this flight controller comes pre-configured with an arming mode, and that's really cool. It is set with the switch on the left shoulder, so you can see that when I move the left shoulder switch all the way forward, the arming mode, uh, well, it's disabled right now because we're plugged into the computer for safety. It's disabled on the bench, but you can see it goes red, indicating that it would be active if it weren't disabled. So that's good. That's going to be our arming switch. And it looks like this switch here is going to be our flip over after crash switch. That is, uh, if you crash upside down and you activate that mode, then you can flip the copter over. It's called turtle mode. I have a video about how to use turtle mode. And after you're done with this, maybe if you want to go check that out, it's linked in the video description, like all the other reference videos I've, I've mentioned. Now, I'm going to guess if you're a first timer, and especially if you're coming from a DJI background, you're probably going to want an auto level mode. In fact, if you're coming from a DJI background, auto level is what you're probably used to. Acro mode, which is how racing and freestyle quads are flown, can be pretty unfamiliar. We can set up that mode as well by doing, well, we're, first we're going to undo hide unused modes, and we're going to go to angle mode, and we're going to hit add range. And then we're going to move that turtle mode switch one time, and you see that will fill in right here the aux channel that that switch is controlling. So then what we're going to do is, I'm going to just clean the screen up again by re-enabling hide unused modes and we can see that aux 3 is controlling both turtle mode flip over after crash and angle mode and what i want is when the switch is in the down position we've got turtle mode when the switch is in the middle position we're going to have angle mode and when the switch is in the up position we have none of the above i'm going to just hit save here and we can see that based on, it should be, I hope it's pretty intuitive how these ranges work. This little indicator is showing the channel position or the switch position. And when I move the switch, now it's in the middle position, angle mode, down position, flip crash, and up position, none of the above. So there you go. Now you have auto level, turtle mode, and arming. And that is really most of what you need to fly a quad. There are a few other changes I want you to make, and not all of these changes are going to make sense to you here at the beginning, but just trust me, they're going to improve your flight experience. I want you to change the stick low threshold from 1050 to 1005. And the reason we do that is, do you see that when I have my throttle all the way down, I have a throttle value of 1000. That's what you want to see, and that's what I saw on my DJI system with absolutely no adjustments whatsoever. If you assume that's also what you see, then go ahead and change your stick low threshold to 1,005. And I'm going to put the throttle all the way up, and I'm going to change my stick high threshold to 1,995. And, oh, well... Well, my stick high is already right about 1995. What you need is that the stick low threshold is just a little bit higher than your throttle at the lowest position, and the stick high threshold is just a little bit lower than your throttle at the highest position. So since my throttle is maxing out at 1995, I could set the stick high threshold to 1990. The throttle at the bottom is at 1000. I'm going to set it to 1005. We basically want the stick low and high to be just a little bit inside the maximum and minimum throttle positions. Here in the configuration tab, I'm going to recommend you change from D-Shot 1200 to D-Shot 600. Um, this is going to give a little bit less performance, but a little bit more reliability, and maybe not even any noticeable reduction in performance. Manufacturers often ship their equipment set to D-Shot 1200 because it's just like the highest number, and it's impressive on the marketing materials, but I set all my quads to D-Shot 600, and I'm going to suggest you do that as well. Here in the arming section of the configuration tab is a parameter called the maximum arm angle, and what this does is if the quadcopter is not flat and level, it will prevent it from arming. The idea is that if you're carrying the quadcopter in your hand and you accidentally flip the arm switch, blah, it'll, it'll start to spin the motors and it'll cut you. And that's, of course, that's bad. The maximum arm angle would prevent it from arming if you were just carrying it around. But it also prevents you from arming if you're just like on a hill. So I prefer to set the maximum arm angle for all of my quads to 180 degrees. That disables the maximum arm angle and lets you arm regardless of if you're like tilted forward on a hill or anything like that. But be aware that if you do that, you are <laughs> But be aware that if you do that, you are disabling 
an essential safety feature. Here's what I suggest you do instead. After you disarm the quadcopter, raise the throttle. And when the throttle is raised, the quadcopter will refuse to arm. So that kind of acts as a, a safety check and prevents you from, this switch is so easy to accidentally flip. And a lot of people, they're bending over to pick their quad up, their transmitter's dangling around their neck, and it flips the switch in the quadcopter arms and cuts them, sometimes seriously. So that's what I suggest. You arm the quad, you finish flying, you disarm, you raise the throttle. And now the quad will not arm until you lower the throttle. Now you may arm. Well, that is it, guys. The quadcopter is ready to fly. Okay, you got to put props on it first. If you've never put props on your quad before, I have a video about how to put props on correctly. Um, and then you're going to strap a battery to it. You'll need a battery strap. And you're going to take it out and do what's called a hover maiden. The very first time you fly an aircraft, it's called the maiden flight. And the very first time you fly a quadcopter, you basically just lift it off, hover it, make sure everything is working right, and then set it down again, and then you're good to go. I have a video, again, linked in the video description, about how to safely do a hover maiden. It's not as simple as just arm and take off. Things can go wrong, and there's a safe and a less safe way to do it. I'll link that video down below. But that is going to do it for this series. I really appreciate you guys coming along. If this was your first build, thank you. It's, it's an honor that you chose me to take you through your first build. I hope it went great. If it didn't go great and you have any questions, put them in the comments. Sometimes over time, the comments, I don't see them on older videos. Just reach out to me, Facebook Messenger or email. I will do my best to answer your questions. That is what I do. For now, though, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you feel like I earned it, I do have to tell you, I got a Patreon where you can support me. This is my full-time job. That's all I'm going to say, though. Thanks for watching. Get out there and fly. Happy flying. Oh, ah! Bye-bye.